Let me tell you the story of a camera so absurd, so innovative, and so clearly copied that it was sued out of existence. And all from your favorite camera brand, Polaroid. This is the Polaroid IM1836, and there's a reason you've never heard of it. Besides the fact that the model name makes no sense, this is an interchangeable lens camera that ran Android. And that's just the tip of the crazy features that we're gonna learn about today. But from the get-go, this camera was not what it seemed. First, while this uses Polaroid's brand name, it's not the Polaroid you're thinking of, at least not directly. Polaroid sold the use of its name, licensed it to other companies to sell digital cameras under. And this camera was developed by a company called Sakar International. If you go to Sakar's website today, they still show Polaroid as a brand that they make products under. But if you look under their current digital cameras, it just shows a dash cam under the Vivitar brand name. Sakar has actually been making products since 1977. And if you look up Sakar camera, they've even made cameras under that brand name for decades including film cameras. My favorites being this iCarly camera for kids and this camera that comes with a cameras for dummies book for learning how to take better pictures, which just seems like a hilarious gag gift to give someone today. The front of the packaging, you can't see it's made by Sakar, but if you look closely on the back, that's where we can see Sakar International. There's Crayola cameras, Speed Racer cameras, SpongeBob cameras. It's clearly a brand companies turn to for a quick money grab in the shape of a camera. Which makes you wonder, what is a big company like Polaroid doing hanging around a company like Sakar International? Like Kodak, Polaroid struggled to transition from film to digital, although they did release this beauty of a camera. Uh, we'll talk about that another day. Having another company create the camera and then just market it under your name actually seems like a pretty good idea if all you're into is making money. So it was probably with that motivation that the Polaroid IM1836 was born. And to Sakar's credit, it was actually pretty innovative, if it wasn't so stolen. <laughs> the camera runs Android Jelly Bean or Android version 4 something, which at the time had only been done by a handful of cameras, and still to this day, not very many. It could have even been the first interchangeable lens Android camera on the market had it ever actually come to market. It could have beaten the Samsung Galaxy NX, which as you'll see soon, um, this was a way, way worse camera. Early reports of this camera at trade shows showed flimsy build quality, a bad touch interface, and shared reports of something truly innovative, but kind of weird. The sensor was apparently not in the camera body at all, but in the lens. As you see in the front of the camera here, we did also, since this is based towards a, a beginner camera, beginner user, we built a sensor into the lens over here. One report mentioned that Sakar did this so users could swap sensors when they bought new lenses and also never had to worry about getting dust on the sensors, which just seems like the most over-engineered answer to that problem. It's like the Ricoh GXR system, although somehow less helpful. But I actually thought that that was a mistranslation or a mix-up in marketing or something. Surely the sensor is not actually in the lens. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you go through all that trouble if you're just for a quick money grab? So that's what I thought until I saw one of these on eBay and was dumb enough to buy it for this video to find out. It was actually new in box, so I got to unbox this camera that never officially sold to the public. I wonder where the seller got it from. On the bottom of the box, you can see that it was made by Sakar International under the license name of Polaroid. And this just seems really disingenuous. I know it happens all the time, but somebody's gonna buy a product because they've heard of this great brand and they've seen its legacy it has, and then they get this piece of junk. The product art on the box looks like it was shot on this camera, and with that foreshadowing, let's open it up. This kit included the camera, a 10 to 30 millimeter lens, and a detachable flash, which is kind of nice. The camera does run Android, like I said, and we'll look at that in a second, but I want to first check and see if the sensor is actually in the lens. If you take the lens off and look at the body, you'll see this black reflective square, and that's not a filter or a sensor, it's just plastic. You'll see the same thing on the back of the lens. As has become the norm on this channel, we are going to have to open up this lens and see how the sensor works. Opening up the lens, I can see there is indeed a sensor inside the lens, which is just, I have no words. So Sakar wasn't lying then, the sensor is in the lens, and I have no idea why they did this. Everything else about this camera feels cheap and rushed, so why would they go through that effort? 
I actually kind of feel bad for the developers and engineers involved because some of them are probably pretty cool people who are just told to rip off another company. Before we get to that though, here's Android. And on a large touch interface, it actually wasn't half bad for the first few minutes. I mean, you can't actually do anything nowadays because the version of Android is so old, no apps work, and websites don't even like this ancient vulnerable browser it's running, so they won't load either. But the Wi-Fi does work. But then I actually started using the camera for, you know, what it was made for, the camera, and it got a lot worse. The interface isn't too bad and you can change a lot of settings, but it's just so buggy. It was constantly freezing or crashing and not just with the same error, but I saw like a dozen unique errors. When I was able to get a picture, I had the options of shooting in classic filter modes, such as black and white and red, green and blue. What the heck? <laughs> Speaking of filters, when I took apart the lens, I actually discovered that the hot mirror filter is super easy to remove. That's this pinkish filter that's added to sensors to remove infrared light from hitting the sensor. But they're typically glued on top of the sensor, unlike this one, which was just hanging out. So I took it out and now I have an infrared converted camera, which is just a hilarious turn of events on what is otherwise such a bad camera. The images are not at all great, but probably what you'd expect. There's a sort of mushiness that really shouldn't be there for an 18 megapixel interchangeable lens camera. There's a sort of expectation that comes with that. And if this ever actually reached the public, all of these problems, it would have been a mess, but it never did. Because as you might've noticed already, this camera looks an awful lot like the Nikon One system. And you aren't the only one to notice that. Nikon noticed that too. From the typography of the lens to the shape and size of the lens and the camera body and the button layout, well, yeah, they weren't gonna get away with this. Just a short time after the Polaroid IM 1836 was shown off at CES 2013, Nikon filed a lawsuit against Sakaar International claiming they ripped off Nikon One's design. So they sued Sakaar to stop making and prohibit them from selling the Polaroid IM 1836. What's even crazier is there were two other models announced at the same time one even has a Walmart listing page that's still up, the store that this camera was supposed to sell out, if that tells you anything. And oh look, doesn't this one look pretty similar to the Pentax Q? <laughs> Another ripoff? I have no idea the rest of the story. It's really hard to get information about this, but as far as I'm aware, this camera never actually publicly sold. But clearly Sakara International had a bunch made already, ready to sell. And so they're probably in some warehouse somewhere, or some landfill and somehow I ended up on my lap. This wasn't the only Android camera or the camera to run a smart operating system. And I made a video all about that over here that I think you'll find pretty interesting. I'll see you over there. And until next time, as always, happy snapping.